This episode has been brought to you by Fornos Law Firm, devoted to optimizing your legal results at fornoslaw.com. Welcome to Push Rim Life After Injury Podcast for March 19, 2013. Episode 23, special guest Stephanie Alvis with ABL Denim. I'm Ray Pizarro. I'm Richard Bell. I'd like to thank our audience for being with us once again. And um, those of you who watch regularly might notice a ominous omission. Dr. Boris Del Cid, um, his absence is actually a good thing. Um, and in his own words here, um, we are the first and only SCI wellness clinic in Southern California that attends to health cultivation and maintenance of SCI individuals. We have developed a comprehensive, non-evasive, and holistic approach to promote a healthy life after SCI injury. Since our goal is to identify and address the many aspects of keeping SCI individuals healthy, we are aspiring to be a destination place from anywhere in the U.S. and in the world. This is a lofty goal, but we believe we possess an effective, unique, and safe overture to health maintenance for SEI individuals. We recognize that everyone is a unique case. No same injury um, even uh, ever occurs, just like a snowflake. <laughs> Therefore, a wellness plan is de- designed to the individual's needs. So we are excited to share our knowledge with those of us that suddenly and unexpectedly have experienced SCIs. Dr. Boris Del Cid, founder, Apex Chiropractic and SCI Wellness Center. Yeah, Dr. B. That's a lot of words, bro. <laughs> That's okay. You did great, bro. You hung in there. Boris, the, dude, great job out there. We miss you. And I know you're going to be stopping in and out on the weekends to do some shows. So uh, kudos to you, man. That's a big, over, you know, over what? It's a huge project yeah. and, and uh, something to be proud of. Yeah, and we're glad you're getting back into the swing of things. That's right. So, And, uh, um, and now for Stephanie. That's right. How are you, Stephanie? Welcome to Hi. the show, Stephanie. Thanks for having me. Glad, glad you made here. it out. Yes. Happy to be here. So yeah. tell us what you got. What do you have here? Well, I am making adaptive denim, which is just a, a regular premium denim fashion line and uh, that is easier to get in and out of. If you have some disabilities, if you're in a chair, if you got some issues with your fingers, I'm making them look good and they're functional. Nice. So, Stephanie, tell us a little bit about how you got started. What made you get into this type of work and, and you know, your different projects that are you into right now? Okay. Uh, I started sewing when I was really little, about 10 years old, and I always loved it. I made everything. I was just constantly making something. And, um, my brother is developmentally disabled, and, um, you know, back in the 70s, there weren't even sneakers with Velcro on them. So, right, I mean, yeah. it was a real struggle for him to dress. And um, so my mom used to say, when I was a teenager, and it looked like I was geared towards making clothes. I mean, indefinitely, you know, one doesn't really think about what you think of as your hobby. Yes. Yeah. And she said, why don't you make clothes for kids like your brother? And I said, nah, I want to make fashion, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's right. Anyway, went to college, did not study design because I thought it was my hobby. And what do I do when I get out of school? Go right into design because you, you just go. keep doing what you do. So yeah. worked for all kinds of companies, large and small. You work your way up like any career. And, right. um, and then I had my own business and I had a shop in New York City and I had a small collection, small line, sold to a couple of good stores, both in the U.S. and New York and in Japan. And um, it was really great to see what you have in you as a designer. Um, and then, uh, uh, you know, time goes on. I move out to Los Angeles and, um, things sort of transcend. Um, and, uh, the main point of why I got into this type of clothing Mm -hmm. is because my stepsister had a couple of bad back surgeries Mm -hmm. and with nerve damage, she is using a chair. So I went to visit her. And um, she complained that she just doesn't have it in her to get dressed unless she has to. She's living in scrubs during the day at home. Right. She feels kind of schleppy. And, and what can, and, and she just, she doesn't really care about it very much. It's just too hard. So I looked at her, cl- I was looking at her clothes and she said, they're so hard to get on and off and go to the bathroom and so on. And I said, well, well what about if we open them up? 
um, and make it easier to, you know, I said, it can't be that complicated, yes. you know? Um, so I asked her to send me a pair or give me a, let me take home a pair of pants and let me play with them a little bit. And, right. and um, so I, I got to thinking about it and I was talking to my mom and I realized that I said, this could be something really great that I could do with my skills. I mean, I, you, when you're a designer, it's not just a creative job. It's about like 10% creativity, well, mm-hmm. 20% creativity mm-hmm. and about 80% technical. You, you really have, have to know how things are made, what machines to use, right. how things work together. So it's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, with that technical knowledge, mm-hmm. you become a problem solver. So, if I need to open up the pants in a certain way, how am I going to close them and how am I going to finish it so that it doesn't irritate the skin and so on? So I started talking to people and looking, you know, Google, you can teach yourself anything, right? The wheel started spinning. Then. The wheel started <laughs> spinning. And I looked around and I, I Googled adaptive clothes. Well, I didn't even know the word adaptive at that point because she was newly in a chair and I didn't have any friends in chairs then. Um, I mean, I'd known some people, of course, you know, mm-hmm. encountered people, but, uh, I started thinking about, like, well, what do people do? What do they wear? You know? Mm-hmm. So I, to be honest, I saw a lot of geriatric looking clothes out mm-hmm. there. And yeah. I said, wait a minute. Sweatpants. <laughs> yeah. And, but, but the, the people, the clothes that were specifically made were really mostly for older people. And I said, mm-hmm. well, okay, it's all fine, good older people, but what about some fashion? You know? Right. I mean, there are older people who want fashion too. And most of the stuff was just really not, not what I would want to wear. Yeah, because we so, like to look good too. You know, we like to go well, out. Why on, shouldn't you? Right? We like <laughs> to go out on dates and go out to movies and have our favorite pair of jeans without worrying about it. You know, and not looking good or hurting our bottom. Well, right? I mean, just whether you're disabled or not, of course you. You know, you. I mean, some people don't care, but most people do like their clothes mm-hmm. because it's on their body, it has to feel good, and of course you want it to look good. I mean, it's only human. So, um. I started talking to people and I really, I really got into it more because I said, I, I got to do this. I just got to do this. This feels like the right thing to be doing. Um, to be honest, making another piece of clothing to hang on a rack with so many other things in stores mean, had come to a point even before this that it didn't mean much to me anymore. I did it a long time. Mm-hmm. And, um, like any job, that can, it can be a grind. It can be. It doesn't matter. You know, you're making a, little, a bottle, you're making a, a piece of clothing you love. Um, but, um, I knew that this is what I should be doing, that I had something good to offer here, you know? Wow. Um, so what I did was I started with, um, I had to learn a little more and, uh, I said, you know, I don't know what to manufacture yet because I don't know what people really want. Mm-hmm. So I said, well, let me do what I did for my, for Nancy, my stepsister. Okay. I said, let me tailor, let me fix clothes, people's, other people's clothes. They mm-hmm. come to me, they tell me what they need and I fix it. So I learned so much. Um, by them telling me what their issue was or what their challenge was and what they can and cannot do. And I learned to ask the right questions like you do in any work. Right. So, um, and if I didn't know enough about what they were dealing with, I looked it up and I, I would just ask those questions. And then I would come up with a solution that would help them get out of their, in and out of their clothes more easily. Mm. Um, so after, you know, a, a year of this, you have a number of clients, you start mm-hmm. to get a knowledge base. Mm-hmm. And, um, I did the abilities expo as an exploratory with the tailoring business. Okay. And I asked everybody, um, what kind of clothes do you want to wear? What, what do you like to wear? And what can you get that's, uh, that works for you? And the number one thing that people told me that they wanted were jeans. Cause everybody wants, everybody wears jeans. Even yeah. if some people wear them all the time, like I do and many of yeah, us do. Yeah, like I do. Yes. Right. And some people only wear them for, you know, when they're really casual. But I think these days, for the most part, jeans are part of the clothing vernacular. You've got them. You've got generally more than one. You could dress them up. You could dress them down. Yeah. You you got a black pair. You got a navy pair. You know, you have some grungy pair. uh, You know, you have it for, for anything. So... So I really started then look more into jeans. Mm -hmm. And as a designer, uh, jeans is a specialty. There's special machines. There are people who know about this. There's shrinkage issues. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of issues. It's, it's very technical. And I had never done a line of jeans. I had designed a few pair of jeans, part of a collection, but not a, I was not a jeans designer. So I consulted with somebody who is a jeans know it all. He knows everything and he knows the factories here in Los Angeles. Um, 
And basically, you know, when you know the right questions to ask about your line of work, you can find it out about a, 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 a kind of a, a product that you don't know that much about. In my case, it was denim. You can, you know, yeah, I'm a quick study anyway, so. So based on all that feedback from mm -hmm. the Abel Taylor business, of which I, st I still do, because some people need some things adjusted on their own clothes. Right. Yeah, like um, the jeans I'm wearing now. <laughs> Full disclosure. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I was able to narrow down, because everybody's different, of course, and has different needs, but I was able to narrow down to a couple of styles that addressed a number of needs. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to start somewhere. You can't offer, it's, it's you know, it's expensive to get a, a line going. Um, there's so much development. Yeah, yeah the majority. So much development, the fit and everything. It's, it can be, it can be, it's a lot of work. I mean, it's great work, but. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. So I said, okay, just start with a couple of styles. Take mm -hmm. it from there. You know, there's more you can do later if it grows. Right. And just keep having friends try them and tell you how to make them the best they can mm -hmm. be. Because otherwise, I, if it's not just right, it doesn't need to be. Mm -hmm. So, because otherwise you can go into the store and find plenty of nice jeans too yeah. that, so, that don't work for you. Right. <laughs> you know, that already don't work. So. so you gather all their data up and started writing down the top maybe three issues they were having with their current jeans that didn't fit well and then started yeah. making changes. Is yeah. that how you went about it? Yeah. Like the number one thing was that they're too low in the back. Oh. You know, that's the number one thing I heard from everyone. They're just too low in the back. Okay. Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, especially those, what were those things? The skinny jeans or the, oh my God. Cut. Yeah, the low cut. Those low, low cut, cut jeans. Yeah. Not yeah. for people sitting down. My that's man, a... coin slots is like out there. <laughs> yeah, that's no bueno, bro. <laughs> no Nobody <laughs> wants to see that or Nobody, be. Yeah. No, we, no, we no. don't want to yeah, see that. Please, please. No. I mean, people complain about when they're not in chairs, but they, they still, you know, they can live with it because they're, yeah. they're not always sitting down at all. But, so and obviously when you're that was the number one. Thing. Obviously yeah. when you're sitting, even your pants rise up too. So instead of wearing what you used to, you know, the size that you used to, now you gotta wear a little longer. Uh because Yeah, they do a little looser up. too. Yeah. A little looser, yeah. I mean if you're if you're wearing a leg bag or you know, so the, these are the types of things that I that I've learned. I mean now again I can't cut them custom for each person so you right. have to generalize so right, um right, right. so it's it's a challenge to see that when i first cut this production um is it going to be okay for everybody you know i do worry about that so i ask for as much feedback as i can right because to make it as general mm -hmm. as far reaching as possible so i i hope that people will give me that feedba feedback feedback and give me the chance to grow and, and say okay all right, they were a little too slim in the legs. Right. Uh, I'll get it right next time. You know, please support me in the effort in, to support to to work on this for right. for the community and mm -hmm. together. Honestly, we can get it right. I can't do this. I'm not. I know I'm not wearing them. <laughs> I mean, I could wear them. You know, I, there are some that I will wear. I, they're great when they're higher and back. It's fine. And I, I there right. I do have had customers who are not in chairs also. So just the fact that they're higher and back, and that's only one feature, one as you feature. know. Um, works for other people too. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's it sounds like it's really good to get um, detailed and specific feedback. Yeah, from so people. yeah, I was gonna ask. Um, is it okay if um people, you know, maybe ask you some questions on push rooms, send you a note, and please give you some suggestions there. Absolutely. Okay, so you guys heard it. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely, yeah. because this is how I can make the line better. I mean, I think that that's, to me it's obvious. I think it's it's well you know? needed and under underserved in our community, especially um, you know, detailed and one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, alterations like that, it's hard to find. I mean, if you go to any alteration, they don't know that you're sitting. They don't know that we're prone to pressure sores right. and we can't have in inseams that are you know, digging into our bottoms and, and things like that. And it seems like you, you've already experienced that know. feedback. And yeah. And they don't know what questions to ask. Right. Like they don't know to ask the, do you have enough dexterity to close a button? Right. Or do you need a hook and bar instead? Or do you need Velcro with yes. that? Where, you know, and then you look at the person and to be honest, if they have a really big belly, they right. can't wear the Velcro because it'll pop open. Right. Right. So you say, can you do that hook? I mean, you know, you have to find out what's going to work for them. So what I'm doing now with having a ready made line of denim mm -hmm. that you would order online, like many other lines, mm -hmm. if you need some special something done to it, I have to do an alteration on top. 
So just like if you took it to a tailor. You know? uh, could you give us some, uh, did you bring along a few examples you could maybe uh, show us here of, of what you've done? I did. So here's one style um, okay. that I did that, um, for instance, of course, is much higher in the back. This oh, one yeah. actually see. has a denim knit on the seat. So I'm going to turn that around so you can see that. So if you're sitting, I mean, it's, it's a good looking kind of a denim knit. It's really, really soft. It's like a big old sweatshirt. Right. And it's doubled, or I should say self lined so that all the seams are on the inside. There's nothing, there's nothing touching the body. I mean, the front part is like a regular pair of jeans. Right. Kind, except that, it, I mean, it doesn't have any front pockets, but it's got the line on them so that they look like they do. Cause I yeah. know you're not using them. Right. There's a leg pocket so you can have a, Oh, wow. cell phone yes, on your leg. Definitely, yeah. And then I added this little, I mean, it looks like a zipper pocket, but it's actually, it's actually, for, if you're using the sports bag and want to use it as a cat. It's yeah, your catheter or, or your leg bag. Yeah. So, um, so it should be roomy enough in the legs to, um, support a leg bag if you're using that, but I don't want them too baggy because I know that some no, people yes. are getting atrophy or they just don't want them looking too baggy. Right, you, know, you want right. a nice line when you're right. sitting. So that's the challenge is get, getting that right measurement. So, um, this is great. I um, like that idea in the back where you have a little bit of a, what is it, a spin? The, the it's, oh, it's got just a little bit of elastic. Elastic, just yes. Just enough to, I mean, it'll stretch more when it's on your body and, you, you know, it'll, it'll just hold it hopefully up against your back there. Okay. Um, and do you reinforce the uh, belt loops I on should, there? Because yeah. I always break mine. I mean, when my pants slide down or someone's helping me pull them up, I always end up breaking them because they're, they're not stitched well. Yes, so, yes. <laughs> I have been told big. about that. Yeah. And actually, yes. Yeah, so, um, you re it reinforced these belt loops on these I jeans, did. right? Yeah. I did. Cool. So, in fact, especially because this, just this jean in particular mm -hmm. is of this really soft fabric. Okay. Inside the two layers, I am putting a little piece of, well, I'm actually going to put a panel of denim inside. You won't feel it to reinforce those belt loops because I know you're yanking on it when you're transferring. You yes, know, both yes. on the Sorry, the side's missing. The side right, tab's right. missing on this sample. But, cool. um, so that's that. That's cool. one style. And they come in a couple different colors. Nice. You know. And what's the other one you have there? Is that similar? Or? This is actually for kids. Oh, wow. But I've been asked now to do it for teenagers, young adults too, mm -hmm. because okay. this jean, because it's all elastic, um, yes. This addresses, this was made to address sensory issues. Oh, gotcha. Um, people from the autistic community, every time I saw them, they asked me something. Do you have something that, that people can wear who have sensory issues? Uh -huh. A lot of those kids have it. They don't like any metal. They don't like any seams. It's put mm -hmm. in their socks as well. And everything bothers their skin. Right. Um, so I made a, a jean where seams are on the outside and even the waist, there's no waistband sewn on the inside. So I try to eliminate as much as possible wow. and rub. Um, yeah. and I'm also going to sand the inside too. That's, that's great. So what they do is like when, you know, when you stone wash a jean, yes. you turn it inside out and they wash it again and it's softened on the inside nice. too for these people. Yeah, so that's great. I do have another style for, for men and women and kids too, which okay. is, um, well, for women, it's kind of a sexier jean. It's, mm -hmm. it's, um, a little lower in the front, but of course it's high in the back. Right, right. Hopefully when it's lower in front, it hits sort of right in the middle of your stomach. Everybody's different. Yes. Because you don't want it too high and you don't want it too low. Yeah, so. No, I wear mine high all the time. You just, just so I could keep my stomach in. Cause I'm always, <laughs> you know, I'm sitting. I don't, yeah. I have the quad belly like, like most people know, and it just keeps me in. So it's another way of. Okay. Keeping my my guts in, I guess. Okay, so so you you shouldn't buy the sex. No, no, I'm right? not. I'm I'm over. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> way past the no. sexiness. But actually, that that pant is uh that pant is being tested in men's too. No. So keep mine sexy. Yeah. <laughs> so that one has <laughs> zips going down the side seams to the hip, okay. and that seems to work for some people because the entire front comes down, and then it's easier to to get on for some people. Yeah, to cap right. also too. Yeah. Right. right. For whatever you need, real, real quick, or so. your attendant to to be have quick access to right, right, to right. You. you put whatever. Some people told me that they're opening one side. That opening one side would make it easier for them. Uh, yeah. So I've kind of cool. started with two main genes that uh, that address different things, and people seem to gravitate towards one or the other. Cool. Now, so I, there's one other that I want to show okay. you because it's kind of an ironic thing. Okay. Because it's a sweatpant. 
And oh, it's like okay. people are going, sweat that. Uh, no. Not back. Sweatband. We're going backwards. <laughs> but like this is a real tiny but size. They look like jeans. They look like jeans. They feel, Whoa. it's the same fabric I put on the back of the other wow. one. They feel really good. Wow. They're really, really soft. Cool. So when that elastic waist is covered up by your top, looks like you're wearing a pair of jeans and you can have it with the, you know, with the Elastics elastic at the bottom, bottom or not. Or some not. people like it, some people don't. Nice. You know? But it definitely, it looks like a pair of jeans, but it feels like your jammies. Yeah. You know? Good, good, good work, Stephanie. Thank you. Um, we're, we're getting close I think close I need a to- pair of these. Yeah, those will come in handy on rainy days or just hanging around. And if yeah. you want to make a quick run, you still yeah. don't look like you're all sweated out. But you know they're really in style right now. So I mean, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I've been wearing sweatpants a lot in denim. So that's right. That's Stephanie, another thing. It's a trend thing. Uh, we're we're getting close to to wrap. And you want to tell people about the exciting Kickstarter real quick, oh, uh, yeah. briefly, uh, to to let people know what's going on with that. We are doing a campaign on f- a Kickstarter.com okay. to uh, raise funds for this business. Okay. But the way Kickstarter operates, it's like pledging to your local radio station. Okay. You pledge a couple bucks, you get a thank you, a sincere thank you, okay. by the way. Um, right, right, <laughs> yes. To help this business get going because you have to buy fabric. You yes. have to get all this stuff going before you even ship anything. Okay. If you pledge... Sixty dollars, you get the sensory gene. Yeah. If you pledge uh, seventy-five, you get the sweatshirt. So you okay. know, with with the higher pledges, you get the cost of the launch price of the gene okay. for the 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 structured genes. Um, you pledge eighty, you get the gene. So basically, it's almost like a pre-sale. Nice. But I really need the community to okay, support. Okay, community, me on this uh, effort, you, know? you guys, members, you people out there watching. Please, we need we need your Stephanie needs your support <laughs> to get this going and and uh, you know get the jump start because she has she has issues and um, you know thinks she has to buy it all the equipment and and the denim you gotta and, get all this stuff you know, it's, yeah it's for, true and if the community comes out and supports me in the effort that I'm trying to make this mm-hmm. people outside of the community will see that this is important to them mm-hmm. they want to you know they want they need more options. Yes. Right? Yeah. I mean, more people should be making things for for the community. Uh, you know, plenty of people here. Good deal. So we're gonna uh-huh. we're gonna get close to wrapping here. I mean, if you could let people know where they could find uh, the web page or where okay. they could contact you to if they have any more questions regarding, you know, your your pants mm-hmm. or and all the denim that you do there. Uh, okay. Where can they find you? Kickstarter uh, campaign is at Kickstarter dot com and it's under ABL Denim. Okay. Um, they can also go to my webpage, which is abldenim.com or my tailoring business, uh, abletailor.com. That will open with a page showing the video um, that's talking about this. Oh, who's Great. in that video? Uh, and that video happens to have a couple of friends, uh, couple including Richard Bell being our fit model and oh, chief wow. critic. <laughs> no, she's right on. one of, with Cassandra Tang. Of course. Yes, yeah, of course, Cassandra. Um, yeah, and there um, we show a bit of the process about how these were made Good. and what the uh, what we do in fittings and so on. Show us in the sample room. Um, cool. Thanks for sharing that with us. So, thank you. Um, Rich, any any place where they could find us? Or well, anywhere? you know, you can find us at Club Pushroom and right. Pushroom dot com. Um, and um, I just want to give a shout out to Mishi. I'm on the way over there, brother, to pick up some scrudel. <laughs> if you right. guys are ever in San Pedro, you got to check out Mishi's. Most certainly. And uh, yeah, Club Push Rim, that's on YouTube, our YouTube channel. Please uh, subscribe and uh, leave a comment for us. Any kind of topics you guys want to, you know, bring up or, or uh, resources, please let us know. Um, also, um, if you want to get in contact with us directly, leave us an email at info at pushrim.com for any show topics or suggestions. And uh yeah, with that, we we'll leave you, Boris. Once again, good job, bro. Yeah, Boris. Uh, keep, keep up the good work. We miss you. Yeah, hey, got to come back and hang out when yeah. you can and let us know how your, your business is going. That'd yeah. be cool. Stephanie, thank you once again for being with us. Thank and you. hopefully we could have you back at a future time to see how that went. Okay. Your, your project. Sounds great. Thank, thank you, you, Stephanie. Thank you very much. Thank you guys once again for joining us. Uh, Till next time. And remember, there is life after injury. Peace out. Bye.